Welcome to American Beer TV. We've got a great beer for you today from Stone Brewing Company out of Escondido, California. This is their Vertical Epic 101010 for the October 10th, 2010. Um, they do a, a Vertical Epic every year since 2000 of 2000, since February 2nd of 2002. 2002. So do you think they were thinking about this, like Y2K, and they're like, Damn, we missed the opportunity to start it in 10 years. And they're like, well, yeah. okay, two years down the road, yeah. we're going to start a beer. I think they did, and I mean, they put a lot of forethought into this because all of these beers are designed to be aged until 12, 12 of December 12th of 2012. Yeah, so the idea is that Stone's going to have a vertical tasting of all these beers. Which, you know? these are some pretty massive beers. Yeah. That's if you, if you had a bottle of these and we're going to open one... Each of those bottles, yeah, yeah. I don't think friends. you could get through it. Yeah, yeah you, you would definitely have to. But um, these are really interesting, very unique beers, and you have to have a lot. Of, they really had to think about it because they have to really think, okay, this beer is going to be good to be aged for 10 years. Mm. This beer is going to be good, aged at, just as good, yeah. aged at 9 years, and so on. This one is super unique, and once again, you know, they're trying new things. They're uh, brewing this one with uh, white wine juice. Or, yeah, you know, yeah. So. They, they basically got um, about 10% of the entire volume of this uh, liquids um, is actually grape juice. And it's a, and that in and of itself, to add another layer of complexity, is about 35% Gewurztraminer, about 30% Muscat, um, or Muscat, 20% uh, Sauvignon Blanc, and 15% Riesling. So they used a very interesting blend of, I mean, yeah. even the wine field, that would be an in, that would, that would yeah. make for a very interesting wine, and a very complex wine, mm -hmm. but here in a beer, that's pretty much unheard of. And so. and the way they went about doing it is they put it in uh, halfway through the fermentation process, so when the yeast was super active and going crazy, that's when they added the, uh, the grape juice. Right. So I think, uh, in reading the, the, the bio about the beer, they wanted, I think they wanted to make it still taste like beer. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want those funky flavors. They didn't want to to the yeast to pick up those funky flavors from the grapes too early. Right. I think they wanted that beer essence, mm -hmm. and then have a little bit of that. And they also, by that same token, wanted a very clean kind of beer. A lot of Belgians, um, based on their fermenting t temperature, will pick up uh, clove, banana. That's what we like in in. Uh, Right, yeah, they talked about that too, about the, uh, um, the temperature of um, the fermentation process. They, exactly. They uh, fermented at 72 degrees, right. and a lot of Belgian ales, they'll ferment a little bit higher. I know most most mm -hmm. ales per ferment right around, you know, 68, you know, 70 is getting a little hot. But, it is, but, but for um, a Belgian, it yeah, pulls some Belgian, of those okay, some of those yeah. clove banana flavors out of, the, out of the yeast, especially you can taste those in... Um, the nose on this beer license. is still pretty beery. Me. Yeah, it. But there. Uh, I think if if there's you were something to, if, else there. if somebody were to hand this beer to you and didn't tell you there was, uh, you know, grape juice in it, right? You know, there, yeah, you it, you wouldn't be able to just say, oh, that's probably grape for grape juice, yeah, probably or or, or wine. Um, you you you're not picking up that kind of nose. There is something else to it. You know that there's you can pick up that there's another level of something. But you're not quite certain to what it is, and with stone, and the hops they used in the beer was it perlite? Yeah, perlite? it didn't Did we really put it on our, say. We, we didn't put it down, put it down there. Um, it's definitely not very. And I think they just did one hop hop, hop addition. Right. In that. Just I think that's pretty typical with the, the, uh, some of the Belgian styles. One of the things though that they you did don't really want it to be overpowered with hops. Oh yeah, and one of the things that they did though on this one as well, they used chamomile. Um, oh yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. They they put the chamomile in the whirlpool. In the, yeah, yeah, right at the end of the boil, yeah. um, so that it wouldn't so that it wouldn't lose all of its arom aromatics. So that again adds another level of complexity. Let's take a little yep. set. Yeah, Cheers. definitely. Cheers. Yeah, that. Yeah, with this beer right up front, mm -hmm. I get a little bit of hop. It tastes like a beer, and then as we're talking, yeah, finished. It's like the the wine the, 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 the tannins, through. 
Yeah. Not, not, not really tannins because the tannins come from the skins and we don't know it's really like a little yeah it's if I mean I've, I, I've done a lot of wine tasting I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've drank in my fair share of wine so yeah there we, is like an essence of the wine there mm -hmm. is like a little oh, like a sourness you know mm -hmm. um, and I, I think they had to use some of the skins on the grapes because this does have a tannin mm -hmm. quality and the tannins come from the skin of the right. grape right. Uh, so I don't think it's you know, with, traditionally with white wine, what makes it white is the fact that they don't use skins at yeah, all. Yeah, they usually yeah, just pull it out. Right. But so a lot of, like, um, champagne is a Pinot Noir grape, mm -hmm. and it's still uh, light-colored because they take right. the skins off, so they just use the juice. Um, but but they, the, they had the, to have some, the, some skins in here. The wine grape juice that they used for this beer is from South Coast Winery, which is right. in Temecula, which... I've been to their tasting room, and they do make phenomenal wine. They really do make <laughs> definitely. Wine. Temecula is a great place for yeah. wine tasting. So, uh, but it really this does is, have that dry. I, I it dries the, you out right down here. Yeah, I love the fact that this beer is like totally, you know, pushing the envelope or pushing uh, a craft beer in a whole new uh, direction. It, it is. It, I mean, when you taste this, it, this is a unique animal. It's not. There's aspects of wine, there's aspects of beer, there's, you know, a, a crazy Frankenstein of each of them, and it's it's yeah. a very, very enjoyable and intriguing experience. They use a unique malt, um, mm -hmm. triticale, yeah. flaked triticale, which is kind of like a oatmeal type thing. They, they say that it's a, it's a cross between rye and wheat, mm -hmm. which sounds really intriguing. Actually, that's, that's about 11% of the mash, and then 9% um, of it. It just comes from amber candy sugar, which is probably what gives it this this rich amber yeah color here. Because other yeah, than that, I don't think the triticale is going to give it that much color. No, and the rest and of that it low amount of it. Yeah, yeah, the rest of it is all pale malt. So you know, it's it's probably so, less so those two. Basically, this beer without the wine would be like a Belgian golden ale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it it would be pretty. It would probably be pretty standard. It would still be. Hazy from probably from the triticale from the from the wheat aspect of it, and have a little more body because of the rye. But then you start adding chamomile, mm -hmm. and that's one of those things that, in something like this with such big flavors as the beer and the and the wine, I'm not going to say it gets lost in there, but it adds there's there's an element. Of, it adds it's, complexity, right? Yeah. Is this like the beginning of a new style of beer in the craft beer industry? You know, more and more. Are you gonna? Are we gonna start seeing more and more brewers starting to use uh, wine grapes? I think we have. Beers? I think I think we're, we're we're going to, and I think we're already starting to see it kind of taken off. Um, I think Dogfish Head probably was the most uh, marketed with the mice right. touch, right? Right. And I know the brewery, and those are muscat grapes in that. Yeah, minus touch. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the brewery I know made. Uh, a, Couple beers now, that and I think they're good. working on like a champagne right. style beer that's both you know pale malts and um, white uh, grape juice. Yeah, so yeah, I think you're going to expect to see a lot more of, of of this kind of you know. Hot I've always you know out. as a home brewer, I've always thought about it, done a lot of wine tasting, mm -hmm. so I'm always thinking like, I wonder what this would taste like, you know, mixed with you know, a beer style or whatever, but I've never mixed the two. I've never bothered to mix the two together. Yeah, yeah no, it, and, and you wouldn't because it's a lot, yeah, a lot it's of Yeah, it's kind of weird. You're like, eh. But you know, all winemakers drink beer while they're making wine. <laughs> you probably it's a proven it. fact of talking to many winemakers, and I always tell them, I'm into beer, man, and they're like, that's what we do, and we're making wine. We drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> we might get some couple angry comments on yeah. that. I like only wine. Yeah. No, this is blasphemy. But, yes. You know. Sorry. But uh, then why are they wine? Well, yeah. that's fine. But uh, no, I think you're going to see a lot more of this blending between uh, beer and wine and blurring that, mm -hmm. that line. Yeah, this is definitely a, a very unique experience, and try to get do whatever it takes to get your hands on this. Oh, yeah. Just whether Stone, you, once again, pulls yeah, it off. Definitely. Yes. Whether you like <laughs> it or not, you, you'll probably either love it yeah, or Yeah, I think it. Uh, beer connoisseurs out there, definitely, yeah, try to get your hands on this. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't already, you know. It's a very unique experience, and you owe it to yourself as a craft brew, brew craft beer Connoisseur. aficionado. Aficionado, yes. There you go. To, uh, <laughs> yes. to, to try this one. <laughs> So, there you go.
All right. Well, cheers, Excellent. man. Cheers. Have a good one. Woo-hoo.